Yo! What up guys and welcome back to another one and today we're gonna try some crow hunting It's probably been a couple weeks since we've tried to do a little bit of crow hunting But uh, today we're gonna try a little solo crow action uh, The difference in today is it's a lot colder and we got the snow on the ground. Quite a bit of snow on the ground yet. So I don't know how it's gonna make the birds act. If they're gonna be more hungry, more vulnerable, more intrigued to come to the, to the call. As a lot of you know, we use an e-collar for crow hunting and a couple decoys. And uh, I really wanna get one or two down today. You know, that this is how it is. Crows are hard to shoot. They come and really look at you one low time. And then after that, they're gone. You get one shot. What I've learned with crow hunting is that when they come and when they're low, you have to take the shot. There's no waiting on the shot. Going to be like, ah, well, I think they're going to do it a little closer next time. No, you have to take the shot. So the difference in today is that I've practiced up a little bit. I've had my whiffs. I've taken my whiffs. I've taken my shots and I've missed them. So today we're going to be taking our first shots. I'm not going to be waiting. I, I've burned myself a lot of times by not taking the shot when I should have. But check it out, we got the camo ducks hats and we have the olive green hoodies all back in stock. If you haven't checked them out, I will link both of these products down in the description below. Go pick one up, go support the channel. Thank you very much. Seriously though, crow hunting has been a doozy. It's been rough, it's been tough. It hasn't been easy. I've had a lot of you guys say, hey man, I hear you. Crow hunting isn't very easy, and then I've heard a lot of you say, hey man, every time we go out, we just whack them. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing right or wrong. I'm hoping I'm a little more ready today. I hope I get one or two on the ground. That is the goal. That is the challenge. That is the goal for today. Oh, well, we are walking in here, and we're going back to uh, one of the spots. I think it was the first video I ever did. We're going right back to that same spot. That's a... Uh, that's literally the only spot I've ever had luck uh, where I've actually killed them. So that's where we're going to go. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to be a lot more quiet. See if we can get one on the ground today. Whew. Well, after the little hike getting out here, we are sat up and ready to go. Let me show you what we got going on here. So I'm sitting behind this little evergreen again. I got my bucket right here. Got my gun here loaded up, ready to go. And this time I sat the decoys a lot, a lot closer. Got them at about, I don't know, probably 10 yards, right at 10 or 12 yards right in front of me. And like I said, I'll be hiding behind this evergreen. This is the same spot where I got into them the first video. And one thing I do know is you have to be still. You cannot move. The eyesight of these crows are amazing. I mean, extraordinary eyesight. They can see movement from literally a mile away. So I'm going to be behind this evergreen. It will hide me completely. Last time this evergreen right here, this is what did it because it hid me. Uh, last time I did it, I sat in front of this evergreen. They came over. They wouldn't come close. I shut off the collar, adjusted the spread, got behind this evergreen for about five, seven minutes, flipped the collar back on, and they loved it. So I'm going to use the same tactic get behind this thing. I'm going to pop up, stand up, and shoot. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully they come. <laughs> Hopefully they come. Well, here we go. Let's kick her on. Turn her up. Shouldn't take long. It usually only takes about two to three minutes for the crows to get here once I turn the collar on. Cross our fingers. Let's hope we can get something. I got to get my gun and get ready here. Uh, okay, we are on and rolling. Let's hope that we can uh, draw some attention here. I'm going to stay really still behind this evergreen. Oh man, I hope I can get one on the ground. Oh, we got one in the air right out front, baby. Oh, we got one above us. Oh, I missed him. Son of a gun. <laughs> oh, he wasn't very low, but I was going to give him everything I had and I tried. Son of a gun, that's not good. Should have killed the scout bird, that was definitely the scout bird right there. Son of a gun, Bob, you just messed that all up. He came over the top, he came in this opening right here and I had a decent shot. Ah. Oh, here comes another one, real low. Here comes one. 
There we go, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. Dude, oh. He looks like he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> he's dead. I got him. I gotta go get him. I'm gonna turn the call off for a minute. He just went down over here. Ha <laughs> ha! I cannot believe he died. He died way over here. Oh, here we go. There he is right there. Oh, finally. Been forever since I've killed a crow. Look at you, buddy. Look at you. Oh, oh, oh. I did not think I was going to get one down today. I really didn't think so. I really did not think so at all. Woo, I barely wounded him. I can't believe he came to the decoys after the first bird I missed. Heck yes! Woo! That's what's up. Well, if you guys are liking these crow videos, you know what you gotta do. Give your boy a big old thumbs up. That lets me know that you guys wanna see more. That's what's up right there. Yeah. Man, that's a relief. See where we hit him here. Uh, where did I hit him? Oh, right there in the belly. Right there in the belly. Well, there we go. One down. I'm going to sit him right there in the decoy spread. One extra decoy. <laughs> That's what's up, boys. That's what's up, boys. Oh, man. I just ran to go get him. The first shot's what hit him. These crows are pretty tough. The first shot, I knew it was a good shot. I got up, I got a steady aim on him, and when I hit him, he kind of backpedaled. So I knew I had I had hit him a little bit. I just didn't know how good. Sure enough, I took two more cracks at him. He went down over the tree row. That first shot, though, I knew it was a good shot. I'm using, uh, if you guys are curious, I'm using my Carlson Cremator long range choke. It's basically just like a full choke. Uh, and I'm using, see what I'm using for shot today. I'm using a Viachi, the GPX um, ounce and three eighths, six shot lead. So really good combination. These ounce and three eighths are absolute hammers. So oh, one down on the ground. Let's see how many we can get today. So my plan is now, oh, I'm pumped that I have one on the ground. My plan is I'm gonna turn off the call for a little bit. Um, I have not sucked in a big group yet. Um, it's just been two singles. One came, shot at the first one, missed him. This one came by himself yet again. He died. So I do know that there's a bunch of crows in this area and not seeing the group yet is good. So I'm gonna turn off the call. I'm gonna give them probably a five or 10 minute break. And then I'm gonna flip it back on after about 10 minutes and uh, try to get the attention of the ones that I haven't yet because it's cold, there's snow on the ground. I don't know if they wanna move that well, but it does seem like the singles, when they come to play, they come to play. They're probably pretty hungry with this snow and this cold. So, gonna give them a little break, turn it back on, try to hammer down another one or two. Well, it's been right at 10 minutes. We've really let things, you know, really settle down quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and Flip her back on, see if we can get another one down. It'd be awesome if we could just keep this routine going. <sighs> well, I think that this spot is a bust. It's done, it's not a bust. We got one, uh, one on the ground, we could have had two. I cannot believe I missed that, that first shot on that bird. Gosh darn it, but one, one on the ground. It's, it's been a miracle just to get the one on the ground. I mean, all the past videos, I think I've done two other videos, but all in all, I've probably done four other hunts that haven't even made it to the channel. And it's just because I went out and it was a bust. I got skunked and I got a big goose egg every time. And there's only so much of that that you guys wanna see. So needless to say, for me getting one on the ground, it's a huge accomplishment. If you guys agree, and if you guys agree that crow hunting really isn't the easiest thing on the planet. Just because you have, you know, an e-collar and stuff, doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. These birds are pretty hard to shoot too because they don't just decoy like ducks and geese. They, they just make a circle over the top and you have to judge when, when to take the best shot and when that time is. You have to be the judge of that. So, 
absolutely uh, I'm falling in love with crow hunting uh, the better it gets here the more amped I get and uh, but anyways we're gonna get out of this spot we're gonna go try another spot that I haven't have never tried I've seen crows around it so we're gonna get picked up here we're gonna get back in the truck oh man I'm telling you what out of everything I hunt probably except for the adult snow goose crows are tough and they can take a shot like that one there I hit him right in the chest in the belly and when I hit him he stopped and he batted his wings and then I don't know he probably only flew about 40 50 yards until he took it took the old no nose dive to the dirt but uh, these birds are tough and hunting them is pretty tough as well um, a lot of times you can get them to come take a look at your little sit up but not very often are they going to get low. A lot of times they're going to be taking at minimum 30 yard shots every single time. So if I can give any of my two cents any tips on crow hunting, make sure you got a 12 gauge first of all. You're going to need a 12 gauge. Make sure you have some hot ammunition. Just like me, I'm using the ounce and 3 8 6 shot. It's actually a pheasant load. Uh, so it's a hammer. And then uh, second tip would be take take your shot don't don't hesitate don't think about it don't be like ah I think he's gonna do it closer next time no the first time they come over take that shot just like today had two singles come over there I think the last time I was on I actually had groups come over and groups are actually almost harder because you can't pick your shot at least a single if he's at 30 35 40 yards you have one target to get down and one target only so all in all take your uh, first shots that they give you uh, be aware that they're going to be long shots. Have a hot load, have in an, have in an extended choke, a long range choke. Going to need that. But, but what we're going to do now, we're going to drive around and try to find some crows feeding uh, in the snow. I haven't seen any really feeding in the snow, but today is like the third day we've had this snow on the ground. A lot of it's melted. There are some dry spots. So I'm going to do a little bit of driving here. If I find a little feed, I will film it and we may try to hunt that bad boy. Okay, well, I just found a pile of them, and I just drove in and scared them off, but they're all right by these hay bales. I've seen some uh, crow hunts where they put the decoys on top of the hay bale and out in front of them on the ground. I think that's what I'm going to try here, try to hit it real quick, get in, get out. Um, but there's a lot in these trees behind this little feed area where they are getting into the field to feed. So, I'm going to put up the spread real quick, put up the e-collar, we're going to sit down real fast and... Uh, there's a bunch around here. I'm seeing them everywhere. This could get absolutely nasty. <laughs> oh. oh, well, we got set up literally probably in five minutes. I'll show you what we got going on here. I got these hay bales here. I'm sitting in the middle of these hay bales, so I'll be able to stand up and shoot right out in front of me. This is where we got the spread. Right out here, got the dead one in between the two there. You got the decoys pretty spaced out. A lot of these birds are coming from the trees behind me, coming out here to feed and then going back. That's what just happened when I scared them out of the feed, they went back to these trees. So when I turn on this call, there's not going to be very much distance in between where they are to these decoys. Let's give them hell, boys. Alright, I got you guys on the GoPro here. Let's power the old collar up, crank her up and get ready to roll here. I'm going to have to stay extra, extra still as they come over the back because they should come over the back to try to look at the decoys. Doesn't seem very loud. Oh, here we go. I already hear one in the air. Oh, here we go. Two out front. Two out front. Here we go. They're checking it out hard. Look at them. There's another one. There's one down. <laughs> he down. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. See if we can keep them coming back here. I don't know if they're going to come back, but uh, that was awesome. That was awesome. They did not see me at all behind these hay bales. I mean, not even a little bit. Woo! That is so awesome. Yeah, he came close. He was at about a 20-yard shot right here. I had to take him. That was awesome, boys. Woo! Yeah, well, there's our first dead one from earlier. Here's our second. He didn't fall very, very far away from the spread. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I can see a ton of them over yonder in, the, in that set of trees. Um, they're having to pull them over here from all the way over there. So, gonna put my dead one in the decoys yet again. Gonna give them a little break. Uh, probably about a five minute break. Kick the collar back on, which I'm gonna grab the collar. Probably move it closer on this side because it doesn't seem like it's very loud. Put it right here, see how that does. We're gonna sit back down, give them a little break, turn it back on, see if we can pull some more tension over here. Woo! Well, 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 I'm thinking that, I'm thinking that's it for this, this spot. I've been here for about 15 minutes. It only took, um, at minimum, I mean at bare minimum, two minutes to get to this decoy spread once I turned on that e-collar. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like the other spot. Um, I'm really surprised on the other spot after the first time I shot it didn't just blow out the entire spot and it was done That single came back across. I, I think that single came after I shot at the first spot because he was probably coming to the field He was new to the area he, area. He didn't know I even shot probably so we had three circling up above that one came very 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 close I had to take the shot on him, but today boys best crow hunt yet. We got two birds down starting to learn guys i'm starting to learn a little bit and uh the more you learn the easier it should get so we're gonna go home and we're gonna cook both of these bad boys up i've always wanted to see how crow tastes so hopefully it doesn't kill me or something of course it isn't gonna kill me but hopefully it's tasty what up guys we are back at the shop here and uh i have my crows and i'm gonna get to cleaning them these things should clean nothing different than any other normal bird. Tear back that, oh man, they're tough skinned. Oh boy, they are tough, tough skinned birds. Wow, but then once you tear it, man, that peels back really nice. That is some red meat, let me tell you, this is the first time I've ever cleaned a crow. And uh, let me tell you what, ooh, he's warm, he's steaming. Woo! Ooh, buddy, easy. But uh, it's identical. It should be not much different. Now, the breast is shaped a lot different. Well, not a lot, but mildly different than a duck and goose. But uh, fillet it off there really nice and easy-like. It's not a bad little chunk of meat. Definitely a little tougher meat, it seems. Um, but there we are. There she is. Oh, man. These feathers really come off easily. These feathers are kind of a mess. So when you're cleaning these crows, be sure to get your feathers cleaned up. Man. But there we are. But there she is, guys. There is our crow breast. That is one. I'm going to get the next one off of here. And uh, I'm going to get them in some salt water. Get them curing a little bit. And get the blood taken out of them for a couple hours. And then... We're going to slap some bacon on these bad boys and throw them on the grill. Look at her still steaming. Woo! Well, we have the meat prepared here. That's what I got going on. I got me a little bowl with some salt and water in there. I'm just going to let it sit in there for a little bit, kind of get the blood out of it just for a little while. It's already looking a lot better. Probably only 30 minutes I will leave it in this salt water to get the blood out of it. Well, here we got the little masterpieces. Check that out. Got some thick bacon. Wrapped each of those breasts up. And let me tell you what, these should be yummy. Really feels like crow meat is more like beef. A lot of red, red, red blood. A lot of red meat in there. It's thick, and it's kind of a more compact meat. Not a real stringy meat. So, oh yeah, we got the old grill going, boys. Slap these bad boys right on the bottom rack, shall we? And turn her down a little bit. Do that a little bit there and a little bit of that there. Oh, there we go right there. All right, we're going to let them cook a minute. Pretty much, I'm going to cook them just like I do my steaks. I'm probably going to uh, go about five minutes, five minutes, see where they're at. As far as being rare, I, I like to have my steak, my red meat, still pretty pink. I don't like to cook game all the way through it seems like when you cook game uh more more done well done the gaminess really comes out in it so you want to keep it juicy you want to keep some pink in there because just from what i've learned cooking waterfowl i mean the more i can keep it pink the better it's going to taste well here they are we're about a quarter of the way through just turned them 
And these bad boys are cooking nicely. Oh yeah. So, I'm thinking two things. A lot of you, when I cooked the pigeon, a lot of you were like, oh my god, that's, that's horrible. Well, pigeon are just like dove. They eat the same thing. They're a grain-eating bird. Uh, they, they feed in the fields a lot. So, crows. I know they eat, like, I know they're a scavenger bird too and they'll eat meat. So that's what's kind of got me a little messed up in the head. It's like, what are these bad boys going to taste like? Because what does a crow actually eat? I've never looked up its diet. I probably need to do that. If any of you guys know its diet, like its primary source, other than scavenging, we know that. Drop a comment down below and let me know. But um, we're about done here. Getting close. Oh, and we got a flame going out of control, boys. Oh, Jiminy, Christmas about burned her to toast there. Hey, his bacon's flaming up on me. All right, guys, so I pulled one off the grill. This one was a little thicker, so I'm going to let that one sit there a minute. But here I cut it apart, and it's just about right. Still a little bit of dark pink in the middle. I cooked it a little past kind of more than I wanted to just because I'm a little, you, you know. You just don't know what to expect. But still juicy, not bad. You know, just a little freaked out. I'm like, I'm going to cook this thing. Plus, if the wife watches this later, she's going to be like, oh my God, I cannot believe you ate that, that bloody. Bobby, what are you thinking? So, I'm actually going to try to get her to take a bite. Here in a minute, we're going to go inside and give it a whirl, which I don't think it'll happen whatsoever. Oh, but here we go. Here is the cut piece. I took the bacon off of it. Basically, just the bacon soaked in while it was cooking. So this is the rare breast. So that's rare breast. Not rare breast. That's bare breast. No bacon with it. I just cooked it with the bacon. It's kind of tough, but it's just like a steak. Got a little game to it not much cooked about right maybe just a hair too much like i said but not bad at all mm, that's not bad that's, tastes pretty darn good it's crazy how a crow can taste like that but like i said i cooked it with the bacon and it helped honestly it's probably it's right at what i expected pretty much it's not as bad as I expected. I expected to be, I expected there to be a little more bloody meat taste because when I when I first opened the bird up, the the front of that meat's just really bloody. It's a very red blood meat, a lot of blood in it. So, all in all, turned out better than I expected to be quite honest. I didn't even season it. I put no se meat seasoning on it, you know, no steak seasoning, nothing like that, no barbecue sauce. That was just crow breast wrapped with bacon and then I ate the straight breast, which wasn't bad. I'm sure if you pop the whole thing in your mouth with the bacon and all, it's a lot better. Come on, just try one. It's cooked. I just ate it on camera. You're sitting there picking your nose on camera. Stop, I'm not. You're not gonna try it? No. Why? Just try it. Did you? For the team, for the channel. Do it for the boys, come on. You want some, Bubba? Yes. Yes? Are you sure you want some? Mm -hmm. Oh, he don't know about it. He's going, uh-huh. I think so, Daddy. Are you sure, Bubba? Mm -hmm. No. Well, I tried. I tried, I tried, I tried. Bodie wanted a piece, but Mom, I, I knew. I knew it. She was like, no. Nah. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy the catch, clean, and the cook videos. If you guys want to see more of those, let me know. Say, hey, Bobby, we want to see some snow goose catch, clean, and cooks. We want to see this or that. I already did the pigeon one where we made pigeon jerky at Jordan's place, and you guys liked it. So if you guys have any more ideas for these catch, clean, and cook videos, let me know down in the comments down below. You gotta give me some suggestions of what you guys want me to do. But again, if you haven't checked out duckswaterfowl.com, that's where you can pick up this hoodie and the camo ducks hat. I will link both of these products down below in the description as well. But thank you all for being here. Thank you guys for your continued support. It's always a blessing when you guys are showing your positive vibes down below and just showing your support to keep the channel growing and, and just going forward. Thank you. But we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for being here, y'all.